Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode, I hope to bring our Kerbal back from the moon, of course, and take a look at what else we can do beyond that. But first things first, of course, we probably need to do the entire mission over again because I didn't plant a flag. And I, I'm not going to cheat the, the contract or anything like that. I think we should be able to do a second landing now that we've seen things work out this time. We have 328 days, certainly enough time, even giving, given failures, and hopefully our engines are in better shape than they were previously because they've gotten an extra workout. So yeah, I think we, we can try it again. I mean, and of course we will land in a different biome and get different science, so that would be good. So yeah, I, I don't think we need to rush this contract just yet, though if it turns out that we have a whole lot of test flight failures, I might change my mind on that. But yeah, for now, we'll aim to land again. Oops, I don't need ScanSat right now. But at this point uh, in the tracking station, I am somewhat concerned that when I turn to the vessel, it's going to hop up and do something horrible, right? Uh, if you've ever loaded a vessel on the moon, you know that it might do something particularly nasty. So I have zipped up the save just in case, and we will see. But I want video documentation when it happens. Okay. Uh, well, okay, it popped up a little bit, but not. Uh, it was just springing on the legs, so we're safe. Okay, so Philby, let's see. View stored data, EVA report, surface sample. So that's all good. Um, I think we must have transmitted everything else. And not all of it can be done on the ground anyway. Yeah, we transmitted everything else. We weren't carrying a whole lot. Okay, let's retract the ladder. Phil V appears to be doing good. Pitch is wobbling all over the place though. All right, let's target our... I better make sure it's the right thing that we target. Well, the Hammond. I hope that's the right Hammond, though. Hmm. Well, the... Our Hammond Olympus probe is following right behind, so it must be. Okay, well, we've got a relative inclination, but given our Delta V, we should be able to correct that. So we'll just head up there and and catch up to it better now than later. Though we have plenty of food, water, and oxygen. As you can see, we're fully loaded with that. So, RCS on, and launch. So it says heading to target 73.6 degrees, so that's where we want to go. We did decide to go to a location that would require some inclination adjustment. Okay, that's not... Looks like minimal will get 5 degrees, it says. Or 4 point something. Um, 74 degrees, zero pitch is fine. That's not 74. <laughs> it's wobbling all over the place. Uh, okay, okay, Smart ASS is not doing us justice here. Okay, let's coast to Apoapsis at this point. Um, okay, well there's not much of an Apoapsis right now, but still. I just didn't want to get too high up. Well, our target is pretty high up, so it might be alright. But the lower we are, the faster we catch up. Looks like this ascending node here would be a good time to do the correction as well as boost our periapsis just a little bit. And it's only 127.7 to correct the 4.56 degrees. So that would be good. Looks like we're not going to be too bad off. We've got 789 left. 
Oh, wobbly. Smart ESS is very wobbly around the moon. Probably worse around other planets, too. And people suggest tuning that uh, attitude adjustment, but the problem is it's okay at Earth. It's just the further away from Earth you get, the worse it tends to be. Okay, we've got the makings of a rendezvous right there. And we'll just take that three kilometers. Now this does not have thrusters configured for docking, so that'll be up to the other side. And we're approaching fairly slowly. I don't really want to dock in the dark, but it might come to that. Yep, yeah, it is time for us to deal with things with the other side, but judging from the red local control, this has no connection at the moment. Okay, well, that means we have to delay our, our approach, of course. Earth is over there. Oh, we won't, we won't have to delay for very long. We're just, just like a few minutes. There we go. This has plenty of fuel. Uh, well, the other side is puffing its thrusters a little bit too much, but it should just be SAS over there. We could probably share some fuel with it, but I don't want to go too far on that. Just in case there's some mishap. Of course, we are at an inclined orbit, so it's going to take a little bit more than the 800 meters per second in order to transfer back. But if we can add some more to this, then we can reuse this lander, of course. That could be handy. This is all topped off. All right, yeah. Oh, we can't transfer because reasons... We can't transfer fuel through the docking port, and can we transfer a Kerbal? I doubt it. Yep, we can't transfer anything. That's handy. Okay, well, it's because of the heat shield that we can't transfer the resources. I wonder if ship manifest, do, we, do I have that? No, I don't. Wonder if it would have been able to handle the heat shield issue. Possibly not. Anyway, the lander will still be in orbit around the moon, so we can make use of it. It just needs to be refueled. To be honest, most of its mass is the fuel. So it's not a huge benefit and maybe more trouble than it's worth to reuse it instead of just bringing a new one with all the fuel. Well, this has been one of those sort of modular systems, identical capsules and tanks sort of situation, same engines. Well, actually, this side doesn't have the Lunar Gemini Lander engine. It should. That would be handy. Same solar panels, you know. All very efficient, you know? Okay, but we have to get back. Well, we'll figure out the details on the burn itself. And burn. Okay, let's see the finer points of this transfer back. Here we go again, trying to figure out exactly what altitude I'm supposed to use. So out we go. We've got plenty of food, water, and oxygen. It's only going to take four days. If I wanted to, I could use the 1900 meters per second we've got there to just slow down. And that would be totally safe and everything. 
but not a very good test of the system. Improved communications complete. Well, that's good. There is that Jupiter, Jupiter window coming up. That will be essential for that. The thing is, this capsule does not... Oh, it does have descent mode. Well, that's fine. I think in a later version, they're removing descent mode from the Mark 1 command pod because they figure it's Mercury, but I don't. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, well, well, we'll test it out legitimately, which means I'm not going to use this fuel to drop our orbit. After all, this is a very standard return orbit from the moon. It's not an extreme one. It's a little bit sad dumping this fuel here, but... Okay, that is a decoupler. We are fully charged right now, and even if we have to go around, that's probably enough. I think we can let go of this docking port now, too. Uh-oh. Um, is that alright? That's alright, right? Okay, now it's alright. <laughs> it's probably gonna come back to hit us, though. Um, let's see, is there any practical way we can avoid that? I should have let that go uh, normal. Other things are exploding. Other things are exploding. Don't worry. Don't panic. Don't panic. Whoa, that's a lot of shaky camera. That's probably because of the proximity of the docking port. Okay, we're not holding pitch anymore. You know, that's a lot of tilt. I'm waiting to roll around to control our descent. All right, yeah, not looking bad. Just taking our time here at about 62 kilometers. Getting ready to roll back. Once I'm sure that we are going to be coming straight down. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure at this point. Still lots of fuel up here. We might be able to get away with less. But why? <laughs> why, why, why less? Well, mainly because... You know, the heat shield's in the way of transferring the stuff out to light the service module. Since we can't transfer this down, that's just mass that's taking Delta V out of the service module system. So where exactly are we? Um... Two degrees north, 82 degrees west. It says Earth's water. And so we're just south of Central America. This is the Andes right here. And Peru's, oh, sorry, Panama's around here. This is Peru down here. So Pacific Ocean. Where's G-forces? So far, 3.2. That doesn't, I don't think that includes launch. And there's gotta be another G Force peak coming up. Okay, seems like we're past that. Okay, seems like we're past that, and we're at 3.9 Gs at the end. Okay, a little bit late for it, but let me double check the parachutes. 
that seems fine. And that seems fine. I'll leave the set mode on because, well, that probably won't make a difference, hopefully. We still are carrying more ablator than we need, apparently. Amazingly enough. We're currently over the tropics, which means we have reached... Yep, uh, South America over Colombia. Potentially rough terrain. Oh, we have parachute deployment. Yeah, it is rough terrain. Well, at least it's a little bit elevated. About two kilometers. Well, you'll see. There's some obvious mountains in the background, but I think we're... Oh, there's, there's a hill right here. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm gonna turn the set mode off, actually. I don't know how that's gonna interact with the hill. Uh, that's pretty steep right there. Problem is the heat shields, they like to roll. Get ready to recover at a moment's notice. Uh, oh, oh, and the parachutes don't always help. Uh, think I think we're all right. Oh, oh, I showed the thing. Oh, wait. Come on. Recover vessel. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, close one. July 22nd, 1968. One year before the Apollo 11 mission. And it is done, technically, though not for the contract, which is fine. Wow, Philby will be on leave until 1969, all half year. We don't have a huge number of Kerbals, right? Let me just check our... Because, you know, we intend to send another one out. So when is that possible? Yeah, everybody else is fine. Okay. So we've got another Hammond and Hammond lander under construction. We've got a Hammond lander in storage. Let's just send another Hammond lander over there so that it's ready to go. And then once we get another Hammond ready, we can send another Kerbal to try and get it done. And of course, we have plenty of abort modes should an engine fail. And we'll just build another Hammond. I mean, they're expensive. Well, the rollout cost is expensive, but I think we can manage it just fine. The contract doesn't pay very well. If you were wondering why I was sort of upset about the advance, it's because the actual payment for the contract is not as much as the advance. See, the completion is only 2 million, the advance is 4.7, and upgrading the astronaut complex is 5 million. So, yeah. And of course we've lost a few rockets along the way because we lost engines. And so, at the end of the day, it's probably close to break even. It wasn't a profitable contract. But anyway, uh, let's roll this out and we'll get that started. Of course, Scatterer is doing weird things. Okay, everyone, this is the launch of another Hammond lander on an Olympus rocket to the moon. Throttle is up, SAS is on, ignition. <laughs> We have a problem. Uh, wait. Uh, why? Why is? Oh no, that's fine. <laughs> I was confused for a second. All right, we're good. We're good. I'm a little bit panicky. I really want this to work the first time. That's unlikely. Oh wait. Oh uh, yeah. The liquid hydrogen is just boiling off normally. I think. Pretty high boil off rate. But Could have tossed some extra MLI layers, I suppose, somewhere along the way. But probably not worth it. We have lost an engine. That's not a problem for this stage. But we'll get the opposite one ready. Just in case another one goes out.
technically the G-force is up high enough, we can shut this one down now. Okay, separation and ignition. Ignition. A little bit of residual pitch correction there. Pretty sure our trajectory this time was not quite as good as last time, so we're not getting as much left over in the J2 stage. But that should still leave us with a sufficient surplus. Okay, that's good enough. 241 by 197. We've got 482 meters per second left. I don't remember how exactly that compares with the previous mission, but... In any case, we are going to transfer over. And we're going to stick to just going prograde. And of course, we'll want that equatorial. But we'll fix that on a mid-course adjustment, I think. As per usual. So this is all right. I should, before I forget, get the antennae out. And we will need solar panels out as well. I haven't really solved that problem with the solar panels. Oh wait, there are solar panels on the Centaur stage, right, so that's fine. I don't have to separate the panels off like I did last time. Okay, well the fuel seems settled. Ignition. That ignition is good. Okay, separation. And checking that's okay. And ignition. Alright. And let's get those solar panels out. Obviously, probably not the best place for solar panels in real life, but, you know. The problem is we don't have uh, the box versions, the retractable versions of these solar panels, which provide 410 watts. These are the extend-only types. If we had the box versions, we could put them on the side without, uh, without it looking wrong. We're more or less on time with the burn. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Well, close, but not quite. Why is RCS not working? Ah, we haven't activated the RCS on this stage. Well, that's obviously not an ideal orbit. In fact, let's try and match the orbit of the previous lander. Well, because that worked, right? I mean, why not? And then we'll have that as a mini backup. Of course, it only has a tiny bit of fuel left, but you never know. Okay, so mid-course adjustment. 2.3 degrees off. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know if the RCS is enough to do it all on its own. We do have, you know, nine more ignitions on the RL-10s, but... Be a quick burst. Yeah, I don't think I have enough patience for just the RCS. Let me have it stabilize at the node point and then we'll do a quick ignition. Okay. That's most of it. Okay, okay. Don't follow anything. That's pretty low, but it's okay. It's not a problem that it's low. I think we should just proceed. Oh, let's get rid of the nose cap. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be floating around for an extended period of time. Well, whether we have the same margins we had last time will depend on whether we get to reignite this stage, of course. The Centaur stage. Otherwise, things will be a lot tighter. 
we should retain communication at periapsis it looks like okay and how much time I mean this is a powerful stage right now engines are stable ignition well just like that we've got another one in orbit around the moon maybe things are gonna work out a little bit easier from now on who knows Okay, and shut down. We have a good orbit, 108 by 90. That's good enough for me. And yeah, 446 left, uh, 4,768, which is comparable to my usually budgeted 4,800, which allows for, you know, potentially some landing location a little bit off the plane of our current orbit. But yeah. We can send another Kerbal to this, and hopefully with a flag, but let's wait. We actually don't have the flags yet, or actually, maybe we do. Let me just double check at the... Uh, did we really take that long? Hold on. Space Center. Or did I not queue it up? I thought I had paid for it already. I think I have paid for it already. It still wants to... Oh, I guess I didn't queue up the upgrade? Or maybe uh, I queued up the upgrade right at the end of the previous episode, and... Um, it didn't save the persistent file when I closed. How annoying. Okay, well, ho hopefully I'm not double paying for it. But yeah, we can't send another Kerbal for the next two months. So that's got to be hanging out there for a little while. Uh, the next actual vehicle that we could send a Kerbal on would take 12 more days. And then there's a backup lander as well. Backup lander could also help with a uh, potential rescue if necessary. You won't be able to bring the Kerbal all the way back into low orbit or, of course, through the atmosphere, but could help. All right, so, well, we've got a little bit of science. I would have thought we had got more science, too. I'm confused. But um, I don't really need the Apollo docking system. Uh, that LR... 87 always throws me the wrong way. The M1's too expensive. KVD1 is very nice. I like that. And the J2S upgrade. So, but we have to get through this one first. These are pretty much useless. We are, we already have the NK engine queued up. Surface science? I don't know if they're worth it, but that's an idea. But if we could slap some extra surface... Well, we can't. The lander is already built, so we can't slap any surface science on that one, at least. Okay, I guess we'll fill out this hydrolox, and then we'll have to wait for more science to get that. Okay, well, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.